Is the Cybertruck any good off-road? Well, I'm here at above 10,000 feet in the mountains of Colorado to find out, but there's a problem. And the problem is what I just showed you, that is snow. Even though we are into June, there's still a lot of snow here in the mountains of Colorado. And I gotta say, being here completely by myself, I hate snow wheeling because it's too easy to get stuck and then you're stuck, especially at above 10,000 feet of elevation. The weather changes really quick. And normally I bring a satellite phone with me, but I lent it to a friend who went fishing in Montana. So I'm here all by myself with the Cybertruck on a trail called St. John's. And by the way, guys, if you've been following us, you know that we're big fans of Onyx Off-Road. And if you want to check them out, use the code TFL to get a discount and it'll let you know where this trail is, St. John, and it'll also tell you how difficult it is. But today, we're gonna take this Cybertruck up the trail to St. John, and hopefully, there won't be too much snow, but I fear there might be because, let me show you over here, walk over here, you can see how much runoff there is. All this stuff is melting very quickly, but probably not fast enough. In fact, there's a little bit of a waterfall down here so let's go check it out. And if you've been watching TFL, you'll know uh, that we've taken the Cybertruck to Moab. And that was before we got the upgrade for lockers. And then we took it back to Moab after the lockers. In other words, after we got the upgrade. And then things got much better. So I'm curious to see how it'll do here in Colorado. But look at all this water that's coming up off the high mountains. I mean, it's quite a bit of snow melt. Beautiful here, huh? Wow. I just love that. Let me zoom out a little bit for you. Look at that. Now that's a picture. But we're not here to do a travel log. We're here to go off road in the Cybertruck and see how it does in the mountains of Colorado. So let's talk about the Cybertruck and let's talk about what kind of off road goodies it has. By the way, I left it running. Uh, so that the suspension stays in its off-road mode. And um, first you'll notice that it does have recovery points, which is really good. And if I'm out of breath, forgive me, 10,000 feet above sea level is like almost three miles. And uh, we've got about 30% less oxygen up here. But it also has relatively off-road worthy tires. I mean, they look better on the outside. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see them. Uh, then on the tread pattern, big old fender flares. Once again, visit our friends at Onyx. As you can tell, I've gotten it dirty. And you like it dirty? I kind of do. I mean, it does look a little bit like a dirty refrigerator, uh, but for the most part, once you get this thing uh, a little uh, off-road dirt on it, like any truck, it starts to look good. Now the best part about the Cybertruck is that it has an incredible amount of off-road clearance. We're talking 16 inches. And I have to say, even right now, and it's, this is its high height, and there's actually three heights, I'll show you in there, but this is its high setting, I think that's already over maybe 12 inches. Uh, let's see what's underneath. And basically underneath, we've got just one flat big pan where the battery lives. And that's always a little bit worrisome out here in Colorado when you're wheeling an electric vehicle. This has about 100, I wanna say 30 kilowatt hour battery. And if you puncture that by dropping a 6,700 pound Cybertruck, on a pointy rock, you're gonna start a forest fire that's probably not gonna go out uh, for a while. So I always worry about that. And I wish Tesla would kind of do a better job of letting us know just how much underbody, not protection, but you know resistance to puncture, because that's where the batteries live. They live right, it's a skateboard. They live right underneath that giant metal pan. So I'd love to know just how hard you'd have to dump this thing on a rock before you puncture the batteries. All right, let's hop inside and kind of show you the, all the off-road mode 
Uh, we got this about three weeks ago, uh, and it's actually really good. So what it tells you, as you can tell, your PSI of your tires kind of not aired down, which is always good. Battery temperature, which is wonderful. Front motor temperature, rear motor temperature. And then over here, you've got different modes. So you've got overland mode, Baja mode, all-purpose rock, gravel, sand. Then this is really nice. You can either keep the truck basically holding when you stop it or letting it roll. And I like to control the speed with the brake and not with the region when I'm off-road. So this roll feature is really nice. A uh, pitch roll compass, um, front camera, side cameras. And this is a big, wide truck. So it's nice to have these side cameras so you know what you're you know, brushing up against. Even though I think that this uh, stainless steel would be uh, really hard to pinstripe with a tree. Uh, and that's really good. Now, uh, rear steering enabled off, and I love to keep it enabled. Come on, truck, why'd you do that to me? Let's go back. Uh, dynamic, off-road, confirm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Baja de deceleration mode standard. Where, what happened to my off-road mode? Oh, there it is, launch off-road app, there it is. Now we're back. Uh, and then we've got wade mode here, which is pretty cool. Uh, apparently somebody who got their truck stuck in a river didn't have wade mode. And then like I said, there's high, very high and extract. Uh, and there's a problem with these, which we'll talk about in a second. Let me see if I can switch to my rear camera. Uh, yeah, I probably switch to my rear camera. Uh, I don't know how to switch to my rear camera, but really the front camera is the one I want. So that's front, how about rear? What does that do? Oh, that cleans it off. That's nice, I can squirt it off. Love that. What does that do? That just takes me back. So maybe you can't do rear camera. Uh, I bet you if I put it in reverse, it'll go to rear camera. All right, well, let's hit the trail. And like I said, the thing I'm most worried about is snow. Um, snow bueno getting stuck out here. Uh, with nobody around, as you can tell, uh, with, uh, zoom out a little bit, uh, with uh, a lot of snow still on the trail. So I got about this far, like I said, I'm on this trail called uh, Saints John, put it in drive, uh, and uh, this does a loop all the way up to the mountain tops. Uh, it goes by a mine, I've done this quite a bit, but usually um, not this early in the year, because like I said, what ends up happening, there ends up being a lot of snow, and snow wheeling uh, is tricky because you can slide into things like trees or big rocks um, quite easily or off the side of the trail. Uh, so let's talk about how this uh, does off-road. My only gripe right now with this truck is uh, this steering wheel. I feel like it's too small. I'd love to have a much bigger steering wheel. I feel like this is like a, in another video I said it, it's like a poodle collar on a Rottweiler. I just want something big and beefy that I can take this truck by the scruff of its neck and control it. But otherwise, um, it does really have great throttle response. So I, I feel like, especially in this roll mode, that I'm getting as much roll as I want. And as you get it kind of deeper into the mountains, this will become important. And as you can start to see, it's getting a little snowy, but nothing I'm too worried about yet. Uh, the other uh, issue that, that, you know, is a little bit I'm, I'm frustrating, maybe um, not perfect, is you'll note that when I go, start going over some of these bigger bumps, I get a lot of head bob. And this is a problem with any car with uh, air suspension. The higher you put it up, and there's an example of that, the more the airbag inflates and the less cushion you have. And so it does get a little bit bumpy. And this is something that, that like I said, all vehicles have. In fact, I remember Land Rover saying that in their latest version of their Discovery, the, I think the five now, uh, they actually had a second set of airbags living on the first set. So when you put it in, in this case, extract mode, you still had a little bit of air bag left. But otherwise, um, you know, for a big ass truck, uh, this thing is doing surprisingly well, kind of going through this. Now, my, other kind of thing that I've noticed immediately is that you can really hear the suspension kind of banging. Uh, and I think that's because you can't get past the fact that this is a heavy vehicle. Batteries are heavy. Uh, and this truck, I think it's 6,700 is very heavy, but oh my God, we're getting to quite a bit of snow here. Let me zoom in on it for you guys. So it's getting a little, uh, uh, it's getting a little snowy. And this is where I don't like wheeling. But 
I do have locking differentials because this is not the Cyber Beast. The Cyber Beast has a three motor setup, one in the front, two in the rear, and you can simulate a traditional mechanical locker with the rear wheels uh, with the two motors. But I love the fact that you can have only the rear on or all on. You can't really have the front on. This is what most vehicles do anyway. Uh, with the Hummer EV, we found that there's a disadvantage and an advantage, I'm gonna try to plow through the snow, in having two rear motors that simulate a locker. This Cybertruck dual motor, like I said, has two mechanical lockers. So when you lock them up, you're sending all the power to all four wheels. Well, 25% of the power to each of the wheels. And this is why I hate wheeling, because you can see this big rock in the snow. And if you lose traction, it'll just slam you into the side of the, of the rock. Luckily, it's only, there's only snow on half the trail, so I've got pretty good traction. But it is getting deeper. Oh, gosh, there's more snow right there. Whoa, ooh, I rolled back, too. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Good to know, Cybertruck. Uh, what we found, like I was saying, with the Hummer EV is uh, it's getting kind of deep. Oh, let's just plow through it. Heck, it's fun! Fun, fun, fun! <laughs> Enable... Baja mode. Oh, that is good. That is good fun. I love that. Uh, but that's, uh, that's something you want to do with when you have a buddy <laughs> following you with the winch. Anyway, oh, more snow. Anyway, what I was saying is um, with the Hummer EV, there's an advantage to having those two rear motors. And that is when you lock them up, the vehicle is smart enough to know that they're not fully locked. So you won't crab going around the corner, which makes going around the corner much easier. And it tears up the road a lot less. But then when you really need traction to go over a big obstacle, the motors decide to do their own thing. In other words, they kind of have a mind of their own. Uh, and then what ends up happening is that you want them completely locked up, but they decide they don't want it completely locked up, so you'll floor it and you won't get oh, more snow. All right, I'll give it a little bit of juice here. Come on, uh-oh, stuck, 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 stuck. I am, I am stuck, uh-oh, oh, uh-oh, got stuck. This is what I was afraid of. I hope, luckily I'm going uphill, so I'm hoping I can just back out of this. Oh, I can back out of it. Okay, all right. Well, that was just a little warning. All right. Getting a little tricky, guys. Getting a little tricky. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe use the Nathan method and power through this. Come on. Come on, cyber truck. You can do it. Snow's flying. Come on. Come on. You can do it. 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 And, oh, we did it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh, let me go check this out. Yeah, this is where my luck may run out. Hold on. Give me a second, guys. Let's go out and uh, see what the situation is here. Now that is a properly dirty cyber truck. Yeah, so this is what I'm afraid of. You got about, uh, I don't know, two, three feet of snow right here. And probably put my wheel right there. A lot more snow up there. Slide it into the creek. And then there's even more snow. Let me zoom in on it for you. Way there. And if I had a buddy, if I had a buddy, I'd go for it. And if I got stuck, I'd have a buddy with a winch. But I don't, so I won't. So um, this video will have to be continued, which is fine. You know, it's still early in the high country. And uh, as you guys know, we recently bought a place in Moab so that we can do reviews pretty much year round here in Colorado. Unfortunately, we end up with only about four months of wheeling because of snow. But as you can tell, we got the thing a little snowy and uh, I got to tell you, I'm impressed. Uh, I can't wait for this snow to melt so we can go up there and go to the top of the mountain and actually show you what this thing's like. And if you recall, a couple uh, years ago now, when we had the Hummer EV uh, truck, we took it up uh, Red Cone, which is this very difficult trail. I'm not sure what Onyx race it, but I'm going to give it a 7 or an 8. I end up on the tippy top of a mountain, and you got to kind of negotiate a very steep, rocky hill climb. And uh, the Hummer EV was very heavy. In fact, it's about 3,000 pounds heavier than that because it's got a much bigger battery. 
I want to say at least 100 more kilowatt hours than this. Uh, and what ended up happening is uh, the weight of the truck just kind of made it dig in. So instead of going up the hill, it went into the hill. Uh, so I can't wait to try the Cybertruck uh, and see how it compares. And to be fair, I just, uh, with Tommy, took uh, the Hummer EV SUV off-road in Moab and it did really well. They've come up with a new version of the software. They upgraded the, both the truck and the SUV. So we'll have to get that back here and try it again. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, remember, go to all T F L <laughs> for more news, views, and real world <laughs> cyber truck reviews. I shall see you next time. Ciao.